Hello, I'm Anand Fraser, and I'm here as a representative for the League of Women Voters of New Ulm. And I have the privilege of being here with Carrie Borkert, who is the coordinator of Adaptive Recreational Services here in the New Ulm area. Welcome. Thank you for inviting me. Um, I'm not very clear on what Adaptive Re Recreational Services, or ARS, is. Okay. So if you could give me some history or background. Yeah. So I'll give you the background going b way back to our beginning. Good. So in 1982, ARS, um, Adaptive Recreational Services, was founded. We are a 501c3 nonprofit charitable organization. Mm -hmm. uh, we offer educational, social, and recreational opportunities to people with disabilities. Uh, way back in 1982 is when um, the influx of group homes in the New Ulm area started to open. Um, and the Park and Rec Department, um, concerned citizens all saw a, a need mm -hmm. for some adaptive um, things for these citizens to do. So uh, ARS was formed. Um, since 1982, our mission has stayed the same. Um, you know, offering those recreational, social, educational uh, events, programs, whatever you want to call them, to people with disabilities. We have expanded outside of the city of New Ulm since that time. Uh, we are now into the four county area. Um, oh, ARS is, um, it's unique to New Ulm. It's not a national organization. It's not a oh. state organization. It's not a chain organization. Um, it is unique to New Ulm. Uh, there is one similar in um, Mankato, if you're familiar with disabilities, it's called LEAP. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's um, similar to that, but uh, because we are one of the only in the area, we have people who are willing to drive 45 minutes from St. James, Arlington, Gaylord, Fairfax, wow. the area, uh, to come for events. Oh, well, that's awesome. What kind of events do you have? I mean, kind of give me a Yeah, so we ideas. do a variety of things. All of our events are focused around being adaptable, but we are also focused on being adult-driven um, mm -hmm. events, activities, things like that as well. We do offer programming to uh, teens aged 15 and older all the way into adulthood. Okay. Um, we do adaptive bowling, adaptive pottery, adaptive uh, canvas painting classes. We have music therapy. We go to concerts in the park. Uh, other uh, community uh, events will come as a, as a, a group. Mm -hmm. um, we have card games, board games, uh, bingo. Oh, pretty fun. much pretty much whatever somebody wants to try mm -hmm. if it can be adaptable to everybody yeah. um, we'll try it so how what's your oldest so right now if if my brain is working correctly today <laughs> I believe my oldest gentleman just turned 83 Wow yeah and we do have some down at that 15 year old age as well yeah. and it, so I'm sure it's pretty difficult to get them all together and to do one thing? Yeah, you can imagine the challenge of getting a teenager um, <laughs> interested in doing anything <laughs> and then adding a group of adults to that. Um, yes. But it, it's good. It's good for our older adults to also work uh, with teenagers and it's good mm -hmm. for the teenagers that are living with a developmental disability or a physical disability to see that to see how you're going to grow up and to yes. see that you can flourish, to see that you can get a job, that you can belong in a community, that you can have friends, that you can, there's something beyond living with mom and dad in high school. Yes. So I think it's very important um, for all ages. Really? That's wonderful. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's see, the serve, you serve anyone from 15 up? Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, do you have a phone number that they get a hold of you at? Or? Yeah, so we do have a phone number. Um, ARS is a, a very fiscally responsible um, organization, so we run as bare bones as we can. So we have a cell phone that I carry with me at all mm -hmm. times. Um, I do have another job, so I generally, um, if you call me, leave me a message. Mm -hmm. Don't expect I'm going to answer. It's very <laughs> rare that I would answer you. Mm -hmm. Phone number is 507 Two one seven zero three eight three. And again, please leave me a message. Don't be afraid to do that. Leave me your name, your phone number, and I will get back to you within a couple of days. That sounds like 
You have your work, are you the only employee? Yes, so right now, um, you know, COVID changed everybody's world. COVID changed the ARS world as well. Um, when I first started with ARS in 2016, I believe there were four other activity assistants um, as well as the coordinator. Since that time, as employees have gone, you know, on to other opportunities, um, things like that, um, we've adapted. Again, I have, I've hired a music therapist. I've hired uh, an artist. I've hired uh, someone to do pottery. I've hired a DJ for events. Mm -hmm. So yes, I'm the only employee, but I, ha I have reached out to people who could offer their specialized services and I just have to be the party planner. So how are you funded? I know that you won the 100 Women Who Care we, last we spring. We did, yes. I was a little bit tenacious with that. So I joined 100 Women back when it was founded, and it's a mm -hmm. wonderful organization um, to be able to just sit in a room, and in an hour you've given $10,000 to yes. a nonprofit. So I kind of sat in the background a little bit with 100 Women and thought, yeah, maybe ARS. You know, you're, you're, mm -hmm. you're always thinking that someone else's mission is maybe just a little more important than yours. Mm -hmm. And finally we got to the point with ARS, with our funding, that it's like, okay, I, I need to I need to make a move here. And so, you know, put our name in the hat, was able to speak and, you know, won yes. um, the nomination. So was able to um, get that $10,000 donation and then a $5,000 matching grant will be coming here shortly. So that's great. Mm -hmm. um, our major funding source is the New City of New Ulm Park and Recreation budget. Okay. Um, they give us um, a yearly stipend. It's a, just a little over $8,600 every year. They also give us um, free use of a room at the community center for our events, and they give us a small office space to use as well. So um, I was told that you know way back in the day, if you have a park and recreation department, they need to provide activities to all citizens. Yeah. Well, ARS has kind of taken that specialized uh, portion of people with disabilities, and we plan those activities so that Park mm -hmm. and Rec doesn't have to hire someone to do just adaptive yes. sports or make all of their activities adaptable. So that's mm -hmm. that's the major portion of our funding. Oh, and that's great. And yeah, and yeah from I know our new um, recreation center mm -hmm. is is pretty much you know adaptable for everybody, but. You know, they need to do more than just swim and exercise, right. you know. And I, I, we do use the indoor facilities. We do go to open swim. We do rent uh, courts for pickleball. We will play racquetball. We'll use the walking track. Um, yeah, so Park and Rec is the hugest portion of our budget. We also are uh, a yearly United Way grant recipient. Mm -hmm. um, I have also applied for a Prairie Lakes Regional Arts Council grant for uh, different things and we were awarded that this last year. Uh, I have recently applied for the New Elm Foundation grant. Um, we have a lot of family members uh, that send us donations. Mm -hmm. um, 100 Women Who Care got me a lot of um, exposure. We, yes. got, we got an article in the newspaper so people um, know about us now and are calling and asking how can you help the yes. biggest way you can help honestly is a donation if you're able to do that so uh, word of mouth donations are huge for us so you don't have a volunteer pool you know i don't and people have asked why i don't and i'm not sure why i don't i kind of like the, maybe the control of knowing that i'm going to take care of everyone who's at the event throwing a volunteer in who maybe isn't their heart is in the right place, yeah. but maybe they've never worked with a person with a disability mm -hmm. before. And now all of a sudden something happens that shocks them, disturbs them. Now I have a group of people plus a volunteer that I have to help. <laughs> yeah. And so I haven't branched out to ask for volunteers yet. That may be something that's coming, mm -hmm. um, but that's kind of why. We're, we don't like to be... A secular group but we kind of are we're, we're safer with our group mm -hmm. with little introductions of community so uh, yeah, yeah. And, and I think too uh, some of the people that you serve are happier knowing who they're around they are yeah and you so know. maybe if you were a volunteer who was able to come every single Monday and you were committed to every single Monday. So they got used, my participants would get used to knowing that they can count on you, number one, every single Monday. Yep. And that it's gonna, it's gonna take certain people a, a while to accept you, and it's mm -hmm. gonna take you a while to accept us as well. Oh, definitely, so, yes. yeah. I've worked with people with disabilities. Yeah. And, and 
I, yeah, like you said, people's hearts are in the right place. Totally in the right place. But if they're not used to people mm -hmm. with disabilities, mm -hmm. it, it can be very challenging. It can, yep. Even if you're used to people with disabilities, right. it can be very challenging. Right, exactly. So, do you have any goals that you're looking toward doing? Yeah, so um, because of the, um, you know, the ongoing financial need, you know, inflation hits everybody, it hit us as mm -hmm. well. Um, we're looking at maybe some sponsorship ideas. Um, you'll see a lot of nonprofits will do like a, a bronze, a gold or silver level sponsorship. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to lightly roll with something like that. I met with um, the Positively Connected group, who is, they're a new nonprofit mm. that kind of organizes nonprofits, oh. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the things that they told me is maybe you need to look at sponsorship. So I think what we're going to do, I have to meet with um, some people to help me with that to see what that's gonna look like, but maybe sponsoring um, a participant uh, for their activities monthly, yearly, yeah. or maybe sponsoring an activity yeah. So maybe you want to sponsor a month of karaoke, which is $100, or a month of music therapy, which is $175. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you want to sponsor one individual for a whole month, and maybe they're going to spend $50 that month. Yep. So that's something that we're going to be trying and pushing out maybe into the new year. That really interesting. Yeah, so, I... and then if you, as the donor, want recognition, you know, then we'll give you that mm. Facebook website so, uh, activity sponsored by Mignon yeah. for yeah. the month of October. Yeah. Um, or if you don't want that, then we'll just say sponsored activities yeah. um, from a generous donor or something. Yeah. So there's opportunities. And then honestly, maybe that's where my volunteer pool may come from. Yeah, I think. Um, so yeah. that, yeah, it's, it's, it's a work in progress. It's, it's a little bit changing our method, but our mission is staying the same. Yeah, I can see. So you're not looking at any, like, Numus is coming up this week, um, their gala. Right. Yeah. I don't think that that is maybe fitting for us mm -hmm. um, because, you know, we all want to be included. Um, and I don't know that we're splashy folks. And so maybe I think the galas, if you've been to them, are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to, the the, um, the overall feeling of, of the gala is wonderful. Yep. But I don't see us with one employee yeah. and a board of six people <laughs> yeah. um, um, doing something that large, but yeah. maybe something on a smaller scale. Yeah, well, that I think that sounds wonderful. I know that would be, I know a lot of people who are very generous. I know New Ulm is very generous. We're very lucky. Yes, New Ulm itself, the people are very fiscally responsible, mm -hmm. but when there is a cause, um, when someone needs a few extra dollars, it, yes. it appears. I mean, we there's, there's a network of people, um, and it's uh, every household, I honestly believe, if they could, they would help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now, I, I think we need to put in here that everybody transports themselves oh yes yes so transportation that is that is a big question so i you know the people that come from new Ulm or mm -hmm. outskirts is they're like how how do i get there well that that is on you yep. we do meet in the evenings um from generally 6 30 to 7 30 so heartland express has closed for the day yep. herman express has closed for the day we um taxi services um you know, wax and wane. I thought about an Uber contract, but now you're dealing with vulnerable adults and strangers driving cars. So transportation is on you as the participant. Yep. So that is one thing that I will work with you, maybe your social worker, maybe your home care agency, and we'll brainstorm and we'll help you. But ARS does not offer transportation. Okay, I wanted to make sure I got yeah, that Yeah, thank you for saying that, yeah. You know, because not, you know, it, it, that could be a, something that they say, well, I can't get there, but if they know they can call you mm -hmm. and there's ways of working that through. Right. Yeah. You know, any problem generally has, a generally solution. has a solution. We just yep. need to, we need to work and it might not be, it's going to happen tomorrow, but there are, you know, I have lots of resources to be able to help. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, we and can, lots we of can people to call on. Lots and... of people to call on. Yeah, um, one of the home care agencies in town, Eon, mm -hmm. um, they do have some waivered transportation services. So that you know that whole waivered portion and in your insurance that's out of my ballpark. Yep. But there are people that that do that, and so yeah, I would point and, you in that direction. And that's something too that people need to realize that not just everybody 
can drive up. Dis, you know, right, right. You know, yeah, there there are have, rules. And yeah. I mean, you could be a very concerned neighbor and driving and that's awesome. But there there are some things to think about. What happens if you're in an accident? Mm -hmm. What if the person's in a wheelchair? What if the person has a seizure disorder? Um, what if the person doesn't remember their address? There are yeah. just there are yeah. lots of issues that you need to you need to think about before you just offer transportation services. Very much so. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to sum this up. Is there anything you'd like to, I want you to repeat your telephone number, Yeah. but anything you'd like to just say summing this up for? Yeah. Well, I thank you so much for this opportunity to uh, come and present. Um, as we talked, you know, just getting ready for this. If you don't have somebody who um, is a disabled teen or adult, you may have never heard of ARS mm -hmm. or, or Adaptive Recreational Services. And that's probably okay. Um, but we do want to get our name out there and we yes. do want to get our mission out there. So if there's somebody who needs a place to belong, we're it. I don't ask you to tell me what your disability is. Um, mm -hmm. If you feel that you're, you're longing for a place to belong and to have some, a calmer environment, an accepting environment, um, ARS may be your thing, so yeah. And your phone number again? Phone number again, 507-217-0383. We also have a website. It is nuars.org, so nuars.org, and that has a lot more information on it. Uh, you can find our email, our phone number, uh, newsletters, all kinds of information. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, I have to thank you. One for coming out and having coffee with a complete stranger. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And saying yes to doing this because mm -hmm. I was one of those who, at the 100 Women Who Care, had never heard of ARS. Right. And so it was real informative for me because some of the ladies I sat with at the table had heard of ARS. Mm -hmm. So they were explaining to me what it was. So, so I want to thank you for your time. I know you had to take time off work to come and do mm -hmm. this. And I want to thank the people at NewCat for their generous use of their time. And um, we'll probably see you all again. Thank you. Thank you.